Finally, let's do trade. The first question reads, the table below shows the production possibilities for two countries, North, which could be possibly Canada, and South, which could be maybe Bolivia. If these two countries traded based on comparative advantage, then North would do what? To answer any of these questions, the first thing you need to do is to calculate the opportunity cost. As long as you calculate the opportunity cost correctly, you should be able to answer most of the questions uh, without any major difficulties. Now for this one, uh, the table gives you the hours needed to produce one unit. It says that North needs 10, 10 hours to produce one car, 20 hours to produce an app, and the South it's not as productive, or it's not as good as producing cars and apps at the north because it needs 15 hours to produce a car and 60 hours to produce an app. Now to calculate the opportunity cost, we do the way we did in class, which is, for instance, if you're trying to calculate the opportunity cost of producing cars for north, well, it takes the north 10 hours to produce a car and it takes them 20 hours to produce an app, so they will actually be giving up half an app in order to produce a car. And then you can calculate the opportunity cost for apps in the same way. Or if you remember, we said in class that the opportunity cost of in the same country of the two goods are reciprocal of each other. So if the opportunity cost of producing cars for North is half an app, then the opportunity cost of an app is going to be 1 over 0.5, which is two cars. The opportunity cost for producing an app for the South is 0.25 apps. And the opportunity cost of producing an app for the south is four cars. I posted another video in which I go a little more in detail as to how to calculate opportunity costs if you actually still kind of confused about how to do do that after we we did it in class so you sh I should recommend that if you're still confused about how to calculate opportunity costs you should watch that video and then come back and watch the answers to these problems. But once we calculate the opportunity costs and the opportunity costs are correct correctly calculated then it's just a matter of choosing uh, the people that are going to, the countries that are going to specialize based on the opportunity cost. And clearly, the country that has the lowest opportunity cost for cars to produce cars, and the countries with the lowest opportunity cost for apps to produce the, car, the, the apps. So in this case, the cars are going to produce by the, are going to be produced by the South because the South produces them at 0.25, and the car, and the apps are going to be produced by the North because the North produces them at two cars. So the North, what is the North going to do? The North is going to specialize in cars and the South is going to specialize in apps. I'm sorry, the North is going to specialize in, um, in apps and the South is going to specialize in cars. So which question is that? Well, the North specializes in apps and the South specializes in cars. That's B. And now let's continue to use this opportunity cost to answer the other questions. The second one says, what is the highest price the South will pay to buy an app from the North? Now, who's going to produce the apps? The North is going to produce the apps. And who's going to buy apps from the North? The South is going to buy apps from the North. Now, how does uh, South determine how much is the most they can pay for an app? Well, how much it costs them to produce an app? Well, it costs the South four cars to produce an app. So clearly, they're not going to offer the North anything more than four cars for an app because if they offer them, like, for, say, for instance, five cars for one app, well, this has a really bad deal from the South. They're actually paying the North more for an app that it costs them to produce an app. It costs them four cars to produce an app, so they're, gonna produce, they're not going to pay the North anything more than four cars for one app in order to buy an app from the North. So the answer here is four cars for one app. Now, how much is the lowest price that the North will take from the South in order to sell them an app? Well, it's the same idea. The North actually have to pay two have to pay two cars to produce one app. So they're not going to charge. They have to charge the South something higher than two cars in order to make any gains on this transaction. For instance, if the North charge the South one car for for an app, then they're really losing because they're paying, they're giving up two cars to produce one app and they're only getting one car from the South. So clearly the North have to ask for at least more than two cars for one app in order to produce, uh, in order to sell the app to the South. So the lowest price the North will take for one app is going to be two cars and that's A. So what we just did in these two last questions is to is to establish what is the upper price 
that an app is going to be traded in this market, in the international market where you have two countries. The upper bound for a price for an app, which is four cars, and the lowest price that an app will go, which is two. So that will tell you how to answer the next question, which is the following trade will be beneficial to both regions. Well, you know that anything, if the North sells an app for more than two cars, the North gains. And if the South buys an, R, an app for less than four cars, the South gains. So basically what we're saying here is that the price of an app is going to be anything between two cars for one app and four cars for one app. It's going to be higher, have to be far, higher than two cars for the North to be benefited. And you have to be lower than four cars in order for the South to benefit. So a trade of, for instance, three cars for one app benefits both countries. It benefits the North because the North gets one more car, three, um, than it costs them, two. And it benefits the South because the South pays three cars to produce one app, which is actually less than they produce when they produce them themselves, which is four cars. So which of those, So basically you have to look for the traits in this of this four that falls be between two cars for one app and four cars for one app. The first one is a trade of three cars for three apps. It's one car for one app. That's not good. That definitely wouldn't benefit North. The second one is 12 cars for one uh, for four apps. That actually a trade that will benefit both countries because it's, it will be at a rate of three cars for one app. So that one looks like a good one. Let's do the other ones, the other two. Six cars for four apps, it comes to about 1.5 cars for one app. Well, that doesn't benefit the North because they're getting less than two. And 50 cars for three apps comes to about five cars for one app, and that doesn't benefit the South because they're paying more than it costs them to produce. So the answer here is B, three cars for one app. And then the last question on trade is to understand, even though trade benefits everyone, as we just said in the previous question, there are some people that will be that will not be benefited by trade. So once the two, the two regions begin to trade, which one of these would you rather be? Would you like to be a car manufacturer in the South? Well, let's see. Who's going to make cars? Well, the South is going to make cars. So if you're a car manufacturer in the South, that seems like you're going to be in the winning side of this because you will sell more cars and you're probably going to sell them at a higher price than it costs you to make the cars. So a car manufacturer in the South it's actually going to be winning on this transaction. So that seems like a good answer. A car manufacturer in the North, that's B. Well, that no, because the North is not going to produce cars anymore. The South is going to produce the cars. So if you're a car manufacturer in the North, you're probably not going to be selling a lot of cars. So in, you, in fact, you may actually go out of business or you may decide to switch your production to, some, to another country. Notice that, as we said in class, if you also were in the car manufacturing industry in the in the north, you also be hurting because you're going to lose your job. And then see a consumer of apps in the north. Well, let's see. If you consume apps in the north, you before you were paying two cars, and now since the north is going to sell cars to the south, the market is going to be larger, so they will increase the price of cars. So the price of the apps, uh, the apps, so the price of the apps is probably going to be more than two. You were the consumers were paying two before trade started. Now they're going to pay more than two. So consumers of apps in the north are actually not going to be very happy. So the the main group here that's going to benefit from trade in these two countries are car manufacturers in the south. Now, what, what other group what benefits? Well, clearly uh, cars consumers in the north will benefit because before they were paying 0.5 app for one car, and now that they trade the price is going to be it's going to be more than 0.25 but it's going to be more it's going to be less than 0.5 so consumers of cars in the north will actually benefit by paying less for the price of the cars and this is why trade occurs in general you know if, if the US has a high opportunity cost for producing cars so they will actually decide to shift the production of cars overseas that hurts some people here a lot of people here in the car manufacturing industry but at the same time, consumers of cars in this country benefit because they can pay, they can buy cars at a cheaper price. The idea of trade and the reason why economists promote trade is because, at least in theory, the reduction in the price of cars in the U.S. should more than offset the loss of jobs of the car manufacturing industry. And that reduction, in other, in other words, the, the people who are benefiting by paying lower price for cars 
to pass some of those benefits to the people who are losing their jobs in the form of um, more lawyers that are needed, more hospitals that need to be open, and so forth. But like I said in class, it's really difficult to explain to a person that has been working in the car manufacturing for many years that they will actually that there's many jobs for them, but the jobs are let's say in a different side of the country or in an area in which they have no training. Okay, so this uh, I think this is the last question we have on trade. Hopefully, this will help you uh, study for the exam.